introduce our speakers, uh, our questioners for the next little while. And that is, of course, Mrs. Gimple, who is there, but Javier and Kelly Amaya. Now, humorously, I always refer to Javier as the most interesting man in the world because he's very cross-cultural and he has a wonderful wife and he's just, uh, and if you look behind him right now, you see he has books, he has swords, and he has a bench press. So that's a real Renaissance man there. He sort of got it all covered uh, in that way. If you could put up the picture, Yannick, of the Hope leadership um, during the 90s. Right here, uh, you can see <laughs> the Hope leaders. Now, if you look in the front left, you see Jeannie Shaw. She doesn't look very relaxed, but she's tall and she's right there. Um, to, to her right are Bud and Kitty Childs, then Mohan and Helen Nanjadan are sort of tucked in there in the right-hand corner. Behind Jeannie uh, is her husband, Wyndham. And then right over Jeannie's head is Kelly. And there she is. And right behind her is Javier, who looks like he's 14. But he's uh, very stylish right there. But Javier and Kelly, led the Latin American part. You can see uh, Sean and Lena Wooten. If you look all the way in the back, the back row at the left, that's my dad, Bob Gempel. And of course, my mother, who's there with the same color hair as she has now. And then Sean Wooten, who looks like he's in the same class as Javier is. Okay, so they're there. But and that uh, hasn't changed it an ounce. She's exact. What's that? <laughs> that looks Beautiful then, now exactly. I mean, it's the same. It's the same. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that my last decades are going to be frozen in time like that, but somehow <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, these were the geographic hope leaders. The way hope was organized is the Gempels oversaw the work globally and were part of that world sector leader group, but they had regional vice presidents brothers and sisters who were powerful in their own right, who then took on the responsibility of developing the work for helping the poor around the world. But each one took their own area. Javier and Kelly were in charge of Latin America and the work for the poor there. So they were part of that group and were really inspired and encouraged, of course, to have Her Royal Highness Mrs. Gimple here but also a uh, prince and princess Amaya here as well. Okay, and we're being we're just having fun. But but they were part of the heart of what Hope Worldwide was and is, and they built an incredible uh, organization and had massive impact. Um, and we're going to go to questions. Katrina's question is going first, but before that, I wanted to ask uh, Mrs. Gimple to share about what it was like to work with Javier and Kelly and tell us the truth. Don't tell us that super, you know, syrupy stuff, get down to it. But also I'd like to have Javier and Kelly share about the oppression that they uh, <laughs> while working at Hope Worldwide and why they never would ever want to be subjected to that again. So uh, maybe we should let Javier and Kelly vent first. <laughs> Kelly, why don't you start? That was a confusing intro. He doesn't know how to start. <laughs> I think you would like to know <laughs> what it was like to work with Bob and Pat as they developed Hope Worldwide and what that was yes, like for exactly. us. Is that right? <laughs> you're, you're interpreting okay. me well. Trans okay, okay. So, um, Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us today. And it's very encouraging to see the faces of min young ministers um, from all over the world and the next generation of the leaders. And um, you all inspire us. So we're very thankful to be here. But um, working with Bob and Pat, and as I see the picture, I realize how long ago it was. It doesn't feel that long ago, but it was, a, it was a long time ago, you can tell by our faces, but it, it was an incredible experience. I think some of the most exciting things that we've been able to experience as disciples was because we had that opportunity to work with Hope Worldwide. And working with Bob and Pat was um, 
<laughs> I look back on it now and I realize it was like we were getting an MBA, you know, and how to start a nonprofit organization and build it to be a world-class global organization that was respected by the organizations of the world, you know, the big, the big ones, the big nonprofits. And um, we didn't know at the time the privilege that it was to learn from them and the expertise that they had. I was sharing earlier that it was, wasn't until the memorial service, um, Bob Gempel's memorial service, that we saw a video and I just sat back and thought how, how patient and full of grace they were with us as we questioned their decisions. You know, us, I mean, all of us as the GHLs, we were asking, you know, questioning them, giving them advice on how to do things better in, in building the organization. And they were very patient and full of grace because they really were the experts. They had incredible expertise, business, um, wisdom, everything that we needed. And so it was an incredible privilege to learn from them. But one thing that they did with all of us was they built a family. Um, they took leaders from of the different HOPE uh, organizations around the world and they pulled us all together a couple of times a year for a lengthy time over a week and we would be together and have incredible family building times. We talked and we had business mm -hmm. meetings but we spent a lot of time getting to know each other, bonding and learning from the gifts and talents and the programs that were being built in different parts of the world. So to this day, we have those friendships, you know, we've stayed close with multiple of those people and it's a, it's a bond that goes around the world Man. in the kingdom are, are those uh, hope leaders that Bob and Pat taught us oh, to be true. family. It's true. So a few things that stand out to me uh, yeah, they, they generated a spirit of family. Uh, they uh, trained us. I mean, it, it was just amazing training, but it was training focused on organization and spirituality. Uh, and as a result, you see uh, most of these couples are now uh, key leaders in different churches throughout the movement. Uh, still to this day. I think uh, uh, the, the sense of vision of what God could do was amazing. The interacting in terms of uh, serving with uh, those that are needy, but also exposing us and, and challenging us to interact with people of incredible uh, posture or roles in society uh, because of their example was, was outstanding. And I think, uh, you know, I, I think of Bob and Pat. Pat to me is uh, faith and heart walking around the world and just uh, impacting uh, through her faith and her heart. And Bob, you know, I, I'll share something I didn't share last time was uh, uh, over the last three years, my three uh, greatest examples of men alive passed. And Bob was one of those three. I'd say Wyndham Shaw is the other and my own father would be the third. But talk about a man of integrity, of character, trustworthy, uh, worthy of imitation. I mean, what a stellar human being. So uh, for me, it's been an incredible honor to be uh, connected with these two. Man. That was deep, Javier. Well, I appreciate both of you sharing those things. And um, honestly, he was all of those things. But you were part of a team. And I think a spiritual team needs, actually needs a leader that is very very much like Jesus that puts Jesus's principles into practice. And he did that. And we were, we had complementary skills. So, and we worked as a team together, but with all of you and the people in that picture, I could tell you stories about how much we loved each of them. And how God used them. <clears throat> and if you, someone told me that that has worked 30 years in quote unquote mentoring, that you never know what God's going to do with you until you look back. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where you're going, 
but you can see God's hand when you look back. And I think for all of us working together as a team with love and Christ principles was one of the greatest blessings of our life. Good. And God opened doors to presidents of countries, <laughs> the president of India through his daughter the king of Cambodia and all of his, um, his, the workers that worked with him and really great people. And the organization, and we reported to the world sector leaders as a group. And that, that was an incredible experience, all of it. But at the core of it, was being like the Lord and taking small steps. God opened the doors. We just did it one day at a time. Amen. I'd say one last thing, Doug, just uh, oh. there, there was a clear organizational uh, parallel. Uh, the world sector structure was established. And so the hope leaders were parallel to that. And I think the combination of uh, those relationships uh, was vital to the success of hope at that time. That's right. Yeah, <clears throat> there was there was a, a real benefit for hope that the that the fellowship was well organized. It, that's all. That's and, right. And yep. they we had the parallel relationships. That's really good.